We've had some turbulence since we won 14 sessions in a row. Time to turn that around today, and we start off the day with the best hand in poker, four deuce of clubs. Low Jack raises to 20, and I am one of four callers, and we get a pretty solid flop of Jack 5-3 rainbow. The initial raiser does nothing, but the hijack leads out for 20, and all four other players call. We've got a pot just under 200 bucks, and we get the interesting turn, the jack of clubs. So now the board is paired, but we've got a flush draw to go along with our open-ended straight draw. Remember, the low jack was the one who raised initially. When it gets to him, he checks. The high jack bet the flop, and now he checks. And now the cutoff, who's been quite a calling station, puts out a bet of 20 bucks himself. We, of course, are going nowhere. We make the call. It folds back around, and now the hijack check raises to 80. Um, that's not great. The cutoff calls, and I think we're just priced in to see a river. Great news, we get there on the river, we hit the flush, and the bad news is that it's the three of clubs double pairing the board. So now any three or any jack beats us. At this point, I'm just hoping it checks around. Unfortunately, after the hijack checks this time, the cutoff bets $100. And with someone left to act who's already check raised once in this hand on a double paired board, I think I have no choice but to fold. The hijack goes into the tank and says, I can't beat anything. I don't know if he really has nothing or if he just has nothing in comparison to a full house, but he ends up folding. Kind of an unsettling first hand of the day, but let's turn things around. King Jack of Clubs from the low jack. The $7 button straddle is on. We've got a few limpers and we raise to $40. It folds back around to under the gun who just limped. He makes the call. He's been straightforward Sam. And the flop comes ace, six, deuce with two spades. He checks and I know if I bet at least half pot and he doesn't have an ace, he's gonna fold here. I make it 45 to go and he instantly calls. Turn comes in the eight of clubs and I'm done with this hand. He checks, I check. The river's the five of diamonds. He now leads out for 300 and I can't fold my cards fast enough. We need to turn things around. Come on, poker gods, come through. The $7 button straddle is on and I've got ace jack offsuit. The small blind raises to 16 as he's first to act and we get several other callers this probably means that there are at least one or two other aces that are already accounted for, and considering how rare it's been for the small blind to raise, my ace jack is probably not in great shape. So in position with ace jack offsuit, I decided to just go ahead and put in the call and hope to outflop everybody, and that's what I do, or at least I think, as the flop comes out jack, nine, seven. Sure, it's possible someone's got a set or maybe two pair, or heck, somebody might even have a straight if they played 10-8 suited. But sitting here in position with top pair, top kicker, I love this flop. The big blind bets for 30, the cutoff calls, and I'm gonna go ahead and protect my equity. I raise to 115. Big blind thinks about it and ends up calling and the cutoff gets out of the way. I think that's a good sign because the big blind has been pretty straightforward. He's been more of a calling station, but he's only been aggressive when he actually has a hand. Turn comes in a six of diamonds, looks like a brick to me. He checks and I'm gonna follow a bet fold strategy. I make it 130 to go and the big blind turns to the dealer and says, Okay, leave it. Yep. Yes, yes you can. That's nice raising 300. The six did it for you? And I'm trying to put together what it is that this means. The six did it for you, I ask. Think about it for a minute, and at the end of the day, we're in a single raise pot against a calling station, and he hasn't shown any bluffs all day. So I tell him I'm making a really tight fold, and I get out of the way, and he shows me eight five suited, so he flopped a double gutter and ended up getting there on the turn with a straight. Okay, that's how it's been going lately. So we are 0 for 3 and uh, we need a slump buster. I decide to play like a cornered animal and I leave myself fairly short stacked, choosing not to add on to my $265. I'm under the gun and make a pretty loose raise with jack eight of diamonds to 13. I get three callers and we drill the flop, jack 
eight, six, rainbow, we flop top two. Most of the time, this board is gonna be awful for my range, so I'm gonna bet small as if I have nothing other than ace high. I make it 15 and the low jack comes through for me. He raises to 45. Things get even better when the small blind makes the call and maybe if it was heads up, I could just go ahead and trap, but sitting here with top two pair, I go ahead and bump it up. I wanna make sure I can get my chips in. I three bet to 130, leaving myself with only another 120 behind. And he decides it's just time to go ahead and get it all in. He shoves all of his chips into the middle for 250. The small blind quickly gets out of the way and I feel like I'm probably up against either a set of sixes or maybe open-ended straight draw but I'm not going anywhere. I flop top two pair. Let's hope it's good and that it holds up and we get the nine of diamonds on the turn and the nine of spades on the river. My two pair is counterfeit and sure enough, the low jack shows jack 10. So he went all in with just top pair with a meh kicker and he catches running nines. We are out kicked. We are felted. Chips! I can pretty confidently say that I've never played nine deuce before on this vlog. But take a look at the tiltometer and you can see I am just tilting out of my mind. I'm on the big blind. Hijack raises to only 10. The button calls and it's only another $7 for me to see a flop. I can pretty easily get out of the way unless I happen to flop a monster. So I put in the extra seven bucks and we go to a flop of 10, nine, eight. The hijack decides to continue for 10. The button calls and I'm going to see one more card. And if I don't hit anything, I will just get out of the way. And we drill the two of clubs on the turn. We're now sitting here with two pair. Now the hijack sizes up to 30 bucks. The button calls and it's time for me to fast play my two pair. I raise to 160 and the hijack goes deep into the tank. He thinks about it for a while before ultimately calling and the button folds. So we just need a brick. I really don't want to see like a queen or maybe a six, but anything else is probably good unless it happens to pair the board. We get the five of clubs, which seems like a blank unless he happened to have backdoor clubs. So I'm going to go ahead and bet small, trying to get value from all of his over pairs. I make it 80. He doesn't think too long and he puts in the call. I turn over my two pair and now he turns over his cards, which is not a good sign, and shows eight four of clubs. Eight four of clubs. That's how it's going today. I'm losing to eight four of clubs that's getting raised by the hijack. And he C bets it with bottom pair and goes runner runner for the flush. I am beyond tilted. I get the hand that puts people into orbit with how much it can tilt them. Pocket jacks in the small blind. Middle position raises to 15. The button puts in the call and I am not messing around. I three bet to 65. Initial raiser in middle position folds, but the button puts in the call. So we're going heads up out of position to seven, six, deuce. Hey, at least we didn't see aces or kings. I'm gonna go ahead and bet my over pair and I'm gonna make it expensive. I make it 100 to go and the button pretty quickly folds. Middle position says good raise. I would have stacked you. I had seven, six suited, so your queens wouldn't have been any good. Thankfully, we find a way to win a hand and let's hope this is the start of something good. We take down a small pot with pocket jacks. It's pretty rare that I won't three bet pocket eights, but we've got a pretty fitter fold, a fairly conservative player sitting on the cutoff. So when he raises to 15, it's a pretty narrow range. I'm gonna go ahead and make the call. I think if I three bet, there's a good chance that he might go all in with a higher over pair. And if he's got high cards and he happens to miss the flop, well, I think he'll just check and then I'll know that my eights are good. So in position, I make the call. That invites the hijack to come along as well. And we just hit middle set on queen eight three rainbow. The cutoff continues for 20. I make the call and the hijack calls. Turn comes in the queen of clubs. It checks to me and I bet 50 just trying to get people who have a queen to put their money in. The hijack makes the call and the cutoff folds. I take a look. The hijacks only got about 50 bucks left. I'm a little bit afraid that a club might come and kill my action. So I just go ahead and put my stack in dark for 50 bucks 
and I know that he's gonna make the call if he happens to have a queen. River comes in the 10 of spades and the hijack calls. Sure enough, he's got a queen and we win another medium sized pot, starting to string some things together here and maybe we can make a comeback today despite the dreadful beginning. One of the better suited Broadway hands out there, I raise ace queen of spades from middle position to 13 and get called by the low jack and the small blind. So we're going three ways to a flop of queen jack eight with two clubs. I do have a backdoor draw, but I've got top pair, top kicker. I know that the player seated to my left is more of a calling station than anything. I bet 30, the low jack puts in the call, and the small blind gets out of the way. Turn comes in the five of clubs, so that's not great as the front door flush gets there, but I don't wanna play scared. I'm just gonna go ahead and bet, and if he happens to raise me like he did when he hit his straight, then I'll just get out of the way. I make it 60 to go, and once again, he calls, so I'm not really sure where I stand, but I'm gonna keep the same line considering he's a calling station. The river comes in the jack of clubs, so now there's four clubs out there if he happens to have any club, then he's got me beat. If he happens to have a jack, he's got me beat. Nevertheless, I'm not gonna waver. I stick with my original plan, and if he raises, I'll get out of the way. I bet 55. Lojack thinks about it for a minute and folds. Said that the river was bad for him because he had queen eight for two pair. So we thought the river was bad for us because it brought in a fourth club. But in reality, we were the ones who actually sucked out this time as the paired jack counterfeits his pair of eights. Next filmed hand, we've got ace queen suited again, this time of the diamond variety. We're on the big blind and middle position raises to 15. This is the same player who just had queen eight, allegedly, and hated that river even more than I did. So he raises to 15, three people call, and sitting here with such a strong hand, I'm gonna go ahead and bump it up, especially from the big blind. I make it 80 to go, and the initial raiser goes all in for 235. Folds back around to me. I could really get on board either way, but I think my hand's just too strong to fold. I make the call, and we get the flop of king, jack, six, so we need a 10. The turn is a four, and the river is the 10 of clubs. Middle position shows pocket sixes, so he flopped a set and somehow we end up scooping this pot. Maybe a curse has been lifted. We are streaking, our tilt is gone, and life is good yet again. We're just a few hundred dollars away from even, and our last film hand of the day has a chance to get us there. It's the mighty Pocket Kings, best hand we've had all day by far. Limpin' is pimping apparently, but I'm gonna go ahead and bump this one up from the cutoff. I make it $23 and get three callers. Flop comes out nine, seven, six with two spades. So we faded the ace, which is a good thing, but we've got a pretty connected and clumped up board. Not ideal, but I'm still gonna bet to go ahead and protect my equity in case an ace happens to come on the turn. So when it folds to me, I make it 55 to go and under the gun check raises to 150. This is a solid, aggressive player. He knows the board is horrible for most of my range. He could have a set here. He could have two pair, or he could have a hand that has an eight in it, something like nine, eight, or eight, seven. Uh, he could also have a combo draw with spades. So considering that he's more on the aggressive side, I decide I'm gonna go ahead and make the call and hope for either a brick or maybe a board pair. But things turn from bad to worse as the turn comes in the eight of hearts. My opponent under the gun goes all in, Oh, this is not what I wanted to see. I'm now losing to a lot of two pair hands. I'm losing to sets. I'm losing to any hand that happens to have a 10 or a five in it. Even though there's plenty of pot odds and he's pretty aggressive, I just think there's so many more hands that beat me than I beat when he plays it like this. I turn my king's face up and I toss them into the middle, giving up on hopes of getting even for the day. And under the gun shows ace eight of clubs so he just happened to flop open-ended and decided to check raise me he got a turn which happened to be awful for his hand but it was so much better for his range than mine that he knew he could go ahead and shove and he knew there wasn't much i could do unless i happened to have pocket nines or pocket tens so we get bluffed off of kings and we decide to rack up for the day
Well, that was something. Let me know in the comments, what did you guys think about this session and this vlog? We did a few things a little bit differently. We played a little bit wider range of hands, more on that in a moment. Before I reveal how much I made or lost, let me know in the comments what did you like and what did you not like? What do you want to see more of in future vlogs? We do have four colors now, which you've probably seen over the last vlog or two. Uh, that was a result of comments that we got from users in the community. After reflection, uh, competitiveness is a double-edged sword. On the one hand, it helps you study, it helps you push past obstacles and get over bumps in the road. On the other hand, and I think we saw this tonight, sometimes you try a little bit too hard when maybe you're just not getting the cards that you need to win. For instance, the three hands that I lost big on were four deuce suited, jack eight suited, and nine deuce offsuit. I don't need to be playing any of those hands, and if I simply make the right fold pre-flop with each of those, I have a positive session. I also saw that there were some hands where if I played them more aggressively, I would have won the pot. For example, that ace-jack hand that I had on the button where I ended up losing to a guy who turned the straight. If I just go ahead and three bet ace-jack offsuit like I almost always do, 8-5 is blowing off the hand and I'll end up taking it down or winning after I hit that jack on the flop. So I want to get back to being my tight, aggressive self in future videos. All right, so we were in for $1,300 and unfortunately we cashed out with $752. That is a loss of $548 and over the course of six hours, that's almost a loss of 100 bucks an hour. So not great. Coming up in the next vlog, we just got back from Portland. So we've got highlights from that trip, both of hikes and dogs and scenery as well as from the poker room. Spoiler alert, I was pretty card dead, so we might have to supplement the footage with something that we do this week. But nevertheless, I've got positive things to say about Portland poker, and that will be coming to you next week in vlog 24. Thanks for watching all the way to the end, and we will see you next time on Poker for Pound Pups. Percy, you're not a cat. Percy, you're not a cat, bud. Hey, everybody. Subscribe here to catch the latest episodes. Also, hit that like button and share these videos with anyone who might enjoy them. Doing that really helps the channel and its goal to support dog shelters. So thanks for watching Poker for Pound Pups and have a great day.